Okay. So my name is Claire Carouge. Uh, I'm part of the CMS team and uh, my work is to support work for the center, or part of my work. So today I was thinking of presenting how to use WOLF at NCI. So this presentation will not tell you everything there is to know about WOLF itself. And it's more focused on uh, using WOLF at NCI. So what is WOLF? So WOLF can do a lot of things, unfortunately for the users, because it means it can be quite difficult to set up. WOLF is used for weather forecasting, regional climate, and for idealized simulations. As I say here, I will focus on real simulations because that's where setting up a simulation is the most complicated and uh, setting idealized simulation is often simpler because when it's idealized, you can choose your inputs and just write them by hand and or pretty much. And so it's a lot easier. Oh, someone is not muted, I think, because I have an echo. Um, okay. So to understand how to use Wolf to perform real simulations, I think the best thing to do first is to understand what I call the WOLF ecosystem, because WOLF is not just one program. You can have to run up to six programs to set up your simulation. And so understanding all the connection and links between all of these programs is really important at the start. And all the documentation presented from start to end, I much prefer to see it from end to start because once I know what I want, I can understand why I need the other steps before to get it. And so the main um, program is called wolf.exe. That's where uh, the original model will, work, will do its work. And so the output of that is what you want. To get it to work, you need two set of inputs. Sorry, I will give you a better pointer. So on the right, you need to give the, the model information about the time you want to simulate, the grid description, all the options you want to use, dynamics and physics, whether you want to do data simulation, how you want to handle IO, and maybe other things. All of this is set through a name list, which is a text file, and which you are uh, in charge of editing for uh, your own simulation. The other piece of information WOLF needs is all the meteorological and geographical information that defines um, your simulation. So, the so one so these are in different um, files, and typically you will have initial conditions. You will also have boundary conditions because it's a regional model, so you need to have forcings, meteorological forcings at the borders. You, you may also have workflow input is, usual, is used to force the sea surface temperature. You can also have a file for data assimilation, which is called WAF FDDA. So it's a lot of different files, and all of these files have to be on exactly the same grid and projection as the WAF simulation. So it's the same spatial resolution, same, oops, sorry, same projection, same uh, vertical grid, everything the same. And so I, I don't know. There's still some, sometimes a, a weird sound coming out. So if someone is not muted, please check. Um, 
So, yes, yeah, so these files, as you can imagine, you so we will not find them already ready for you, uh, waiting to be used, uh, and because they all are very specific to your own simulation. And so you have to create these files. And that's where all the other um, programs uh, are used. And so these particular files are all created by a program called wheel.exe. And so if you continue, you have warp.exe, which needs two different type of inputs. And the binary files, oops, are created by wheel.exe. And wheel.exe needs input from the same nameless files and as WOLF. And so I and it needs um, meteorological and geographical fields on the same domain as WOLF, as WOLF but it's only the same uh, special grid. Will.exe will take this information and do the vertical interpolation to your vertical to your vertical uh, grid in WOLF that you were going to use in WOLF.exe. So that's the difference between the meta M files and the boundary files. The meta M files are on the same spatial grid, but the boundary files are also on the same vertical grid. Okay, but here again, meta, meta M files, you will not find them just ready to be used. And so these are created by another program which is called medgrid.exe. And before talking about medgrid.exe, no, I will talk to you about this after, it will be easier. So what does medgrid.exe need? It needs the geographical data here and the meteorological data, and it also needs some time and grid information in a nameless file, which is different from the one used by WOLF. This one is called namelist.dubaps. And the geographical data and grid specifications is again, it's already the geographical data that has been interpolated to your grid and projected because regional climate use projected grids. And the same, the meteorolog meteorological data um, has not yet been uh, put to your grid. It just put in a very specific format, which is called intermediate format. Um, so, yeah, so it's where it gets complicated here because instead of having just one way, you need to create two different pieces of information. So you get two different uh, branches there. And so to create all this data, again, you need to run up to three different programs. One is geogrid.exe, which deals with the geographical data. And the other one, sorry. The other one is ungrid.exe, which deals with the meteorological data. So as you see here, the WOLF has been designed to ingest meteorological data in grid format, not in NetCDF format, which we use most of the time um, in our work. And I'll come back to it later, but just remember, WOLF works perfectly with grid data and is not, meant, is not friendly with NetCDF data. The link grid.csh it's just a small shell script that will link your meteorological, meteorological data to where Ungrip can find it and giving names that Ungrip understands. So uh, it doesn't really transform your data, it just links the files together to something Ungrip can understand. For the ge geographical data, Wolf um, has a very large set of geographical data 
which is already installed at NCI in this location. So you don't have to go and download it or anything. It's already there for you to be used. Um, it still has different, you have data at different resolutions and some of the data can have different sources. You can have different uh, land use uh, sources, for example. Um, so you still have some choices to make, um, but at least all the data is there. And so here is the whole um, diagram of how WOLF is set up. First thing to realize is that I've put a line here. WOLF.exe and real.exe are part of the WOLF side of things. Everything else is, is what is called the WOLF preprocessor system. Both are distributed with WOLF, but they are in separate directories and separate spaces. The other thing I wanted to highlight is that I've put in red all the boxes that are actually user inputs. Okay, so you have two text files to edit and you have choices of the forcing data and the geographical data. And also, we'll come back to it later, but if you remember in the both nameless files, the two text files, you have time and grid information. That means you have to copy time and grid information from one to the other, which is often a source of error when it's human who does it. Um, the only difference is that you could, let's say you have a very long simulation to do, you might not be too able to run wolf.exe over the whole length of your simulation at once. And you have to do a bit and then a restart and then a restart and then a restart. In this case, you will need several nameless dot input, each for each uh, part of your simulation. But you could run WPS with one nameless dot WPS for the whole time of your, that you're interested in. Um, it all depends whether you can um, do it or not. Like if it's very long, you can't. If it's long but not that long, uh, it, it's faster to run WPS and WOLF, so it can, it might may work. So the time information between nameless WPS and nameless that input is not necessarily exactly the same. Okay. So now that we have an idea of what WOLF looks like. How do we go about using it at NCI? Okay, so I just wanted to tell you there was some uh, outdated information on the web before. Uh, WOLF is open source software. Everything is at NCI, that you need is at NCI. You don't need anything, any special access to anything or um, so you, you can use it um, without asking for any for anything. Okay, so now let's have a look at the documentation because WOLF itself has a very extensive documentation. Okay, that's the WOLF users page. And I want to show you a few things that can be useful to you. Uh, first, it has a list of all the different recent versions, which uh, describes all the features of all version and what is new in this version, things like that. Other thing is there is a WOLF support form. That means you could ask questions there that have more users of WOLF, uh, you're welcome to use our climate help for your questions. But knowing that uh, we are not using WOLF for uh, doing science, I only put the model and test that it's working correctly. I don't really look at the science behind it. So um, whereas people on the support forum, I have more ideas about 
um, the science. On the website, we have also a section on tutorial. The NCAR runs tutorials every six months and they put all the presentations here. So it can be a good idea to read at least one, one of them to understand a piece of it. There is also an online tutorial. This link is broken, but you can access it uh, through another link I will show you. The download, you don't need it because NCI, the wolf is already put it there. And now the documentation itself, here you have the real link to the online tutorial, which works. And you also have the user guide. Okay, so user guide is quite long and uh, you're not going to read it all and you shouldn't read it all, but I want to highlight maybe uh, pieces of it that can be interesting to know about. Typically the third point and the fifth point, which presents the WPS and the WOLF model, are probably the most interesting bits in this manual. So the WPS one is relatively short and can be read or, but uh, what's interesting is that at the end, it has descriptions of a lot of uh, options, the nameless variables and uh, WPS need table files. So if you're going to create your own things, uh, you can have information there on um, how to do it. But uh, having a description of all the nameless variables, it's uh, useful often to know what's going on and um, what they are. And it's the same for the WOLF model. You have a lot of presentations of different options and different uh, features. But at the end, you have a summary of the different physics and dynamics options. And you have a description of the nameless variables. And there are a lot of variables of nameless options. And there are more than what you get in the default nameless.input you have by default. So you, you don't think that everything is already in the file. There are a lot more than can be chosen. And uh, for example, what it is useful for, if I find it. Okay, here. For example, the physics, to choose the microphysics um, scheme. You have about, I don't know, 20, more, a bit more than 20 schemes to choose from. And knowing which number corresponds to which scheme can be a bit of a headache, but the whole here, here you have the correspondence between the number and the name of the scheme. So it can be useful for you to know where to find this correspondence. Okay, and I think that's, I mean, there are probably other bits of the manuals that would be useful to some of you and not others, but I think these are the main bits that are useful to know about. And so if I go back to the home. No, I've never used this. I have no idea what's in there. <laughs> but as I said, I haven't done science with it. So maybe there are some bits that are useful for a uh, scientist, I don't know. Okay, so let's go back. So that's um, a lot of information there, but you also need to have the documentation on specificities for NCI. Um, this will tell you where to find the code, how to compile and run because um, the compilation is specific there. The information on compilation you'll find in the WOLF main documentation does not work at NCI. And, all, and a few other uh, small bits and pieces, in particular how to create boundary conditions from a range in data set. So if we go there, sorry. Okay, 
So the main page presents you how to install Wolf and how to run in a few different setup. It also gives you um, the location of a few data sets that are there, the geographical data set, the data set to run the first tutorial of Wolf. And uh, there is also one post-processing software that is installed that is called UP UPP. So uh, it tells you how to use, how to install it, not use it. And so if you want to know how to install, you just click on the version you want. It tells you how to get the source code. The source code is um, stored on GitHub. So I, you need to use Git. You do not need a GitHub account to just clone the code from GitHub. So um, if I would recommend for you to create a GitHub account because it can be useful for your own code development, but you don't need it for Wolf. And after it will tell you how to build uh, the Wolf code, um, it just runs you through the different options. Okay. And we're not going to go through installation and compilation because the compilation takes about at least 25 minutes to run. So out of one hour, it's not possible. And it's a bit boring to wait just 25 minutes for a compilation. <laughs> so, yeah. Normally, all the information is there. And uh, if you don't, if it doesn't work for you or you don't understand something, you are welcome to contact Climate Help uh, when doing it. Okay. So this gives you um, an idea of the documentation that's available to you. So how to start? Obviously, you have to install and compile the code first. Uh, and I would strongly advise to go slowly through the online tutorial, at least the first case, maybe also the second case, which is, if I, be, if I remember correctly, the same as the first case, but with two domains. Um, do not follow the instructions for compilation. Start where it creates a domain. And as I said again, the data set you need for the tutorial case are already installed on at NCI. So you have everything there. You just need to go online and follow the instructions. I find it relatively um, detailed the tutorial, but if there is something you don't understand again, we're here to help. So now how to set up your own experiment? As I said, you have quite a lot of choices to make. The first thing to do is to set up your grid. If you're not using a grid that has been set up by someone else, make sure to spend enough time to check your grid. Check it at the right place, and there are, in the GeoEM file, there are variables that are map fact underscore something that tell you there are map factors and they tell you, in fact, if your grid cells are too, um, too deformed in one direction. Ideally, all your map factors should be one, but if you get a map factor of two, that means you haven't used a good projection for your domain and it's, you shouldn't run a simulation on this because the grid cells are not good at all. Um, one of the domain I use for test as map factors that goes to 1.25. It's already a bit stretching it a bit. Um, but yeah, just double check uh, this carefully. As I said, you have to decide which geographical data to use. For this, I would uh, check the Wolf manual um, if you don't have anyone to discuss with it which meteorological data to use, uh, and if it is available in GRIB format, and if it's not, uh, 
is that someone who already used it for for seeing wolf and can give you the code they use to transform it in grip or whatever they use to make it into a wolf acceptable format. And finally, importantly, you have to, use, to choose all the dynamic and physics options for wolf. And there you have to be very careful because you can create mix that will work in the code but are in fact not scientifically sound. So you get results, but um, they're not, you know, they just numerical data. <laughs> so if you can pick up something that has been done by someone else before, it's much better to start with. Okay, so for meteorological data, uh, there are a few things I know have been used before. So a lot of people use ERA interim for forcing. ERA interim is under license, so please follow the instruction on how to access it. Uh, that, uh, the instruction is on the CMS wiki. We have developed a small utility uh, to help with using error and team data is typically um, you give it the name list.wps file and it will run all of the WPS for you uh, using the correct error and team data for the data provided. So um, you can, this way you don't have to uh, run every program one by one um, by hand. It will just add a little for you. The other case I recently uh, came across is using CIMIP5 data to force uh, your wolf simulation. The Codex experiments have done that, and they have a web page that explains what they've done. They typically took the NetCDF output from CIMIP5 and did a range of transformation to get it to a grid format. Uh, and all the steps are explained on this uh, website. Um, oh, and by the way, I didn't mention before, uh, this training is recorded and will be available on YouTube. So if you want to uh, get one of the links, uh, you'll be able to get it from the video um, later on. Uh, for other data sets, if they exist at NCI as NetDev files only, please ask us because we might be able to provide you with a grip file because maybe these data sets are also available as grip and maybe they're small enough, maybe there's a space, maybe there's a time to download it as grip. So instead of you reinventing the grid file from the NetDF file, it might be um, easier to just ask. Uh, if you're asking for a lot of data, we might not be able to do it, but small data set might be possible. Okay, so then what? You got meteorological data and everything. Often you don't want just to do one simulation. Um, you want to do a whole set of experiments. And unfortunately, unfortunately, there is no tool that handles all cases. Usually people develop their own tool to handle their own little case. And cases can be quite varied. Um, so as you see here, Jamie Silver sent us the code he wrote for his own experiments. And he had a setting that is quite unusual, I find. Typically, it was running the same experiment again and again, but starting at different times. And it had a certain time of spin up and a time where it wanted the output. And what's interesting to note is that this setup does not handle restarts. So if you have a very long experiment, this might not be um, good for you. But this code at least gives you an example of 
how to do it. And what was also specific to him is that because every run had its own starting date, they were all independent from each other. So he had set it up so that uh, several runs run consequent uh, at the same time instead of consequently. So uh, depending on what you want to do, it can be useful or not. But anyway, that's where Jeremy Silver code is. Uh, I'm mentioning it because it's well written and uh, you might be able to pick up some bits for building your own code if you need to. It's written in Python, so if you don't know Python, maybe uh, not so useful, but uh, it's, at, it's at least something that exists that can be used as a starting point. Um, it can also be useful uh, if you just want to run one run because um, the code is set up so that you can run several experiments or you can just run one experiment. So uh, this way you can. And it will run WPS for you first and then run, run the experiment. So. Uh, and it, um, it creates your run directory with a nice name and uh, it organizes all your outputs and inputs nicely for you. So uh, that can be useful. And I believe that is it for today. I, I don't know. I don't know how much time we have left. So it's the first time I run this. Oh yeah, it's very short. Um, do you have any questions on what I've presented so far? Just a note, you'll need to unmute your microphone if you do have a question. No, I have been extremely clear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I have a question for you, actually. Is there anyone present, present who is going to run idealized cases? No, perfect. <laughs> so at least everything I've presented is relevant to everyone. Um, okay, so I have, so if you wanted to, okay, so, so my plan was to ask you whether, um, I wanted to do a, an information session first because there is quite a lot of information to get your head, head around. And I was going to ask you whether you would want a more um, hands-on session next week where we could uh, schedule to run the online tutorial uh, so that if you have questions while running the tutorial, you could ask uh, during the session. Uh, that would mean, I especially say, because I know you haven't used it, um, I can, we can only run the tutorial at NCI, so yeah. people would need uh, to be set to use NCI, so NCI login and everything. Mm, I just made one actually, okay. but still, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, uh, so we could do that. If you wanted to, uh, today we could also finish by um, you trying to get the code although not everyone came with a laptop, I think, but uh, so we could start with getting the code and see if you can understand how to install and uh, compile the code. Um, we won't be able to wait for the end of the compilation, but uh, we could at least get it started. Um, I'm also happy to, if you want, to go through more details of the how to compile because it has a script that has a lot of options, so we are happy to go through the options if you want. I'm Nadi? <laughs> I was going to ask, um, I could ask you after though, a bit about, I was looking at the WARF hydrological model, model system, but maybe that's a question I can ask after the... I don't know anything about oh, the WARF okay. hydro, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just... It's more the computation side. Yes, yeah. I have never, um, I don't know if it's a different model, I mean, yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
Any preference from anyone? No? <laughs> okay. So I think what I will do. Okay. Sorry? Oh, I'm just looking at the Python. This is the Python code? Yeah. No, this is as uh, installation information. So what I was going to do, uh, do with you is look at the um, compilation uh, script. So uh, to see a bit the, the possible um, um, options. I will have to put it bigger than that. Sorry, for the moment, it's not very interesting. Tell me when it's big enough for you to read. Should be fine. Can you read the terminal? Yeah, okay. So if I look at Wolf, okay. When you download, when you install Wolf, you get this. You have a README, you have the UPP, which is the post processor program I told you was installed, WPS, and Wolf V3, which is the Wolf thing. And you have a file which is build.end. I, I have chosen to force the build environment on the user uh, because otherwise, um, it can be um, too difficult, like what I will do will clash with what people have already loaded in their environment and so on. So you will use this build up environment to define the environment that runs Wolf. So it defines all the modules you need to run Wolf. So you don't need to worry about uh, which module needs to be loaded, they will all be loaded for you. And if you want to use others, that's a file you need to modify uh, to do so. And this uh, NetCDF4 option, actually, um, now it is the default to uh, output, uh, WOLF outputs in NetCDF4 compressed uh, format. So you don't really need it anymore, unless you do older versions. And so to compile, you first need to compile Wolf, and after you need to compile WPS. It has to be this order because WPS programs depend on uh, subroutines that are in the Wolf space, so they need to be compiled first. And here, there is one. There is all the Wolf stuff, and this run compile is a script to compile uh, Wolf uh, at NTI. And if you want to know the options of the script, you do dot slash run compile dash H. And it will give you a help on all the possible options. Lot of the options are straightforward. Um, like, for example, you can have uh, debugging options. Uh, you can uh, build WolfCam. You can choose the compile case, so that's useful if you're going to do idealized, idealized cases. If you're going to do real cases, the default is with real cases, so you don't need it. You can clean a previous compilation to compile again. Uh, you can also define what type of nest you want. Um, I didn't talk about this in the presentation, but typically Wolf um, has a grid in which you can have nest at a lower resolution, uh, higher and higher resolution. Uh, and um, it allows to have moving nests, and this is mainly used for uh, cyclones, to track cyclones. 
Uh, and you have two ways of having a moving nest. So I don't know if you're going to do cyclone stuff, but if you don't do cyclone stuff, the default option is fine. So the most um, maybe useful um, option is the A, is the architecture, because you can compare both or different in a lot of different ways. You could run Wolf Serial. I do not advise it at all. Uh, you can run it with only shared memory parallelization. Again, I would not advise it at all. And the most useful are distributed memory parallelization, that's MPI, and shared and distributed memory, that's MPI and OpenMP. So you have both type of parallelization together. Both DMP, DMPAR and SM plus DM are tested by me when I port uh, the model, so they should be working. And in addition to these, for each of these options, you have four different options. Um, no, sorry. What, yeah, you have four different options. You can, um, you can, compile for different processors, which are either the express and normal queues or express BW normal the BW queue, and there's also the KNL queue. So each of these queues are, are different um, opti optimization options. Uh, if you compile for the express normal queues, you can still run on the BW queue, for example, but the run will be maybe slower than if you were to compile directly for the BWQ um, using the optimization flags for the queue. So, and why would you use one queue or the other? Uh, because some are uh, sometimes less used than the others, and so um, you may spend less time waiting for the run to stop in the BWQs and the non-BWQ, for example, sometimes. But um, that's a bit of your, yeah. Um, so the, the default is to do, which one is the default? Oh, yes, seven. So it's to do um, distributed parallelization for the express and normal queues. That's what we run by default. So if you're happy with the default, you just do the slash run compile and it will go for you. Okay. Any questions on all of these? No? Okay. Do you want to start trying to get the code and uh, trying to compile it? See if it's, I mean, as I said, normally you just do um, just one, one compile and you should compile. So, um, but, or do you already have started using and compiling the code? So let's do another way is we can finish here for today. Who wants a hands-on session next week? I will okay. prefer hands-on session. Okay, sure. So next week we'll schedule a hands-on session. Make sure to have an NCI account. Uh, if you can have already compile the code, 
it's better because as I said, the compilation is very long. Um, if you haven't, I will provide uh, executable for you to use, but uh, it might be more useful for you to, to go through the compilation. And we will start by running the online tutorial. And if people go quickly through that, uh, you can start trying uh, doing the uh, event theory enforcing and things like that. So, uh, yeah, going through all the uh, codes I've presented today. Okay. So if there is no question, which doesn't seem to be, um, I'll see you next week. If, if people don't have a Ragin account um, and they're not part of the COE, then they'll need to find some local person who has has access to an account or ask us for temporary. Um, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, um, I might. I might be. I might be able to to get NCI to give us access to the. Uh, training icons, but I don't promise it because it's only one week in advance. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Um, but if you're part of the COE, then you should be uh, eligible to be to join an, an account uh, yes. and yes, project. Yes. And so you should just uh, email Climate Help if you're not sure which project to join. Yeah. Okay. See you next week. Thanks.